Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time we have first impressions of the Honor Magic 6 Pro which has just been announced globally. Let's get started. This seems to me one of the most beautiful cell phones today. The design of the camera module is very original. When you see it, you can immediately recognize it. A circular module with a ring of elongated corners. I love the idea. In addition, in some colors we find the ring highlighted in gold color. It looks with a lot of identity in a market of smartphones that look more and more alike. So I find this as a positive point. The back cover in white color reminds me a lot of the Huawei P60 Pro and its Rococo finish. In fact, the dark green edition also has a similar texture to the one seen, although the feel is smooth. But there are other options also available as light green, which has the golden ring just like the purple edition. And for the more sober ones, it is also in black color. The design definitely that can be one of its strongest points because it is not only beautiful but also very resistant. Sometimes they have called it honor shield glass, although at other times they simply say it is a tough glass and don't give it a specific name. And it's curious that this glass has that level of resistance considering it's a curved glass, so it has a very premium look without sacrificing toughness. Obviously, it also has IP68, so it can withstand being submerged in water. The screen has a diagonal of 6.8 inches with OLED technology to give excellent quality. As we would expect from a high end, its resolution is slightly higher than full HD. It is 1280 by 2800 pixels and has LTPO technology to vary its refresh rate from 1 to 120 hertz. Everywhere you look at it, it's an excellent display. In fact, according to Honor, it has a maximum peak brightness of 5000 nits when viewing HDR content, an exaggeratedly high figure. Like all high-end, it does have stereo sound and with respect to the photographic section, the front camera is 50 megapixels with f2.0 aperture with autofocus. In specifications, it looks like a tremendous camera with a very good range, although we will have to test it later. And next to the front camera, we will also find a depth camera. So, it also features 3D facial recognition much more advanced than the vast majority of smartphones today. Although this pill-shaped screen-centered cutout is very reminiscent of the iPhone. However, this depth camera will not only be used for facial recognition. It can also detect hand gestures to navigate some areas of the system and some apps. And the on-screen cutout also produces the magic capsule, much like the iPhone's dynamic island, which will also recognize when you're looking at it thanks to its eye tracking. And you could open apps simply by looking at this capsule, although it will have to be seen how many apps support this feature, because developers have to adapt their apps. Now let me tell you about the cameras on the back. The main one is 50 megapixels with variable aperture, something that is becoming more and more common in flagship devices. Although in this case, it is capable of varying between f1.4 and f2.0. So the difference isn't that much, but it might help you have a slightly more even focus on close objects. Honestly, this feature doesn't seem that spectacular yet, so we'll have to wait for future generations to see if they offer a wider aperture range. And when you get really close to some object, you could use the 50 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with f2 zero point aperture, which has autofocus. So it works for macro photography as well. The third and last camera is the most attractive because it's a periscope lens with f2.6 aperture and optical zoom 2.5x or so. The lens is not that spectacular, but in conjunction with the 180 megapixel sensor, it can do some interesting things. Below you are looking at some example pictures, although it is not the ideal environment to test the camera, but to give you an idea of the results that could be achieved with each of its cameras. The maximum zoom is 100x, although obviously at that setting a lot of detail is lost, but the combination of optical zoom lens with high resolution sensor is interesting to compete against other manufacturers. Hopefully later we can test the camera of this device in more depth to compare it with other proposals, since so far it seems to me that Honor is the one that offers less optical zoom, but more resolution in the zoom camera sensor. 
One detail is that it cannot record video in 8K, so in this regard it still feels below some competitors. The maximum recording quality is 4K at 60 frames per second, although you can only record at this quality using the main camera and the limit of 15 minutes of recording remains. The front camera can record in 4K at 30 frames per second, something acceptable, but we wish it could go up to 60 frames per second considering that it will be a very expensive device. But where it does surprise too much is in the battery, achieving a capacity of 5,600 milliamps due to a new technology used lithium-ion polymer. This was developed by Honor, and with this they put themselves at the forefront of innovation in the field of cell phone batteries. And despite being a tremendous high-density battery, it supports 80 watts fast charging, 66 watts wireless charging, and reverse wireless charging. And this huge battery fits into a device that is 8.9 millimeters thick and weighs 229 grams for the glass top edition. This is something that all of us users appreciate because I think we all want batteries that last longer. And Honor seems to be listening to these needs. And to manage power, Honor developed a special chip called Honor E Uno to improve battery performance even in extreme weather conditions. The operating system is Magic OS 8.0 based on Android 14. And like the vast majority of operating systems these days, it is trying to improve the customization of the lock screen, very similar to what Apple did with iOS recently for the iPhone. -y. So you have a lot of customization options for placing your photos on this screen, but in addition to that visual enhancement, it has a very interesting feature called Magic Portal. Although difficult to demonstrate on a demo device like the one we have right now, but it allows you to drag text to an app in the sidebar and the device will do an artificial intelligence analysis of this text to perform actions within these apps. Perhaps it will be clearer with an example. If you are sent a message that says a specific address, you could drag it directly to Google Maps and it would immediately start navigating to that address. That is, you avoid having to copy the text, switch apps, paste the text, and start navigation. With this addition, Honor wants users to spend less time in such actions. Another change is that in the home screen settings, you can now select what you want to happen when you swipe down on this screen. You can tell it to lower the notification bar, which was not possible before. And it also has expandable folders for the home screen. They can be expanded in a square format or in an elongated horizontal format so you can organize your applications completely to your liking. And finally, the Yo-Yo Assistant can recognize text prompts. For example, you can ask it to generate a video of your daughter dancing in scenes where she is smiling and it will automatically be able to generate this video thanks to all the artificial intelligence it has. Although this will obviously be limited to language support, so in a later review, I will confirm the availability of these options. The processor, similar to all the high-end this year, is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with a cooling system and the base version has 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And now to finish, the price of this device in the addition of 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage will be 1,299 euros and will be available in green and black colors. Let me know in the comments what you think of this price because on screen you are seeing the reference in other currencies just to give you an idea. Although remember that the prices here are not the same as over there. With that, we have come to the end of this video. This has been just a first look and we hope to have this device available soon for an in-depth review. For the moment, I hope you liked this content. If you did, please let us know and we'll see you next time.